Hey guys, so welcome back to another great video here on Mutru Ninja and today it's not a particularly nice subject at all. So as you can see right here, Amazon will suspend hosting for pro-Trump social network parlor. Um, now that could sort of be leading into something there with that title. To be quite honest with you, I've used Parler myself and I found it to be pretty open to absolutely anybody. I don't think it's sort of pro right wing or pro left wing. It's just pro free speech and allows anybody to just voice their opinion, whatever it may be. Very different from the likes of Twitter, which, as you know, just recently actually uh, got rid of Trump. You know, the president of the United States just deleted his entire account. And as we've seen over recent times that, you know, Twitter is getting more and more sort of this socialist agenda sort of propaganda type website. And for me, that just really is not cool. And I don't think that's good for anybody. And probably if you voted for Trump or you have opposing views to the left, opposing views to what the mainstream media want to push, and you don't like the way that the world is going right now. I mean, just look at communist China, the way that the people are controlled in what they're allowed to believe and say and all the rest of it. Right now, come on, let's be honest. We're beginning to see this now creeping into what used to be the free and uh, the Western world, which was always known to be free and open to everybody. But not anymore, it would seem. So big tech and mass media seem to have a stranglehold on what you can and cannot believe. So what this whole situation with Parler recently reminds me of is exactly what went on before the beginning of the Second World War with the Nazis, the brown shirts going off and all of the propaganda which was pushed on the German people which led them down this road believing they were this sort of new progressive generation going on to do the amazing things, wiping out these nasty villainous uh, Jews from their streets and then the world would be a nicer place. And it's exactly what you see with this whole sort of socialist, left-wing, extremist viewpoint is that they want to silence absolutely every other view which it does not agree with their own. And I've got to say, I think it is terrible. And the fact that they've shut down Parler, which really was the only sort of alternative view that you were allowed to have. Now, I didn't really use it an awful lot. I did have an account on there, but I'll be honest, I barely ever went on there. But just like me, maybe you've also just got a teeny tiny little small Twitter account. You know, you don't have 10 million followers like Donald Trump. You're just a nobody. I've got like 3,900 uh, followers here on Twitter. I've been on Twitter since pretty much the beginning. Now, I think if I even scrolled down here to try and find the end, we probably wouldn't find it because literally I've been on there since I don't even know when. OK, years and years and years I've been on Twitter. I am absolutely disgusted at the way that they've been conducting themselves lately and they really do seem to be doing what people are suggesting you know the crazy nutters suggesting they're bringing in this sort of socialist propaganda stuff and because of that reason i think the only power that we do have as normal citizens is just to deactivate your account so as i say i've been on twitter for years but um yeah i'm just going to deactivate that so apologies if you do follow me on twitter you don't anymore i'm sorry but the question now really is what should Parler be doing next and what can people do to avoid this sort of shutdown where you have this uh, coordinated attack by all these big tech groups there in Silicon Valley where I think it was Apple, Google with the Android App Store. Uh, they all basically shut down Parler, Parler just over the weekend. They all decided that they were just going to close them down. And because of this nonsense about there was allegedly hate speech been put on there as if Twitter and Facebook and all that hasn't been used for that in the past. I mean, come on, uh, talk about double standards. In fact, Facebook back in the day was used for all sorts of revolutionary things in South America and all that and uh, caused absolute more than riots, I can tell you. So I, I think it's uh, really, really bad what they've done there. And what can Parler do to actually come back online? Well, it's going to need something with blockchain, I believe, so that it cannot ever be shut down ever again. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the blockchain alternatives to the usual web and websites, the way it works, something that you can use so that you can put it up on the internet and it can never, ever be shut down. So this first one here is Shift, and Shift is kind of still in development. It's not really quite ready yet, but this does give you an idea of what's going on. So uh, basically, you can upload your website or your data into a blockchain online, 
uh, which means that it's all decentralized and it cannot be controlled by any central authority. It cannot be shut down and it is there forever. So here you have uh, shifts dynamic hosting. So bring your website or API to life by running custom code, blah, 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 blah. So you can allegedly here actually host a website online which cannot ever be shut down. So this one shift, I don't think it's really there yet. If you go down here on the roadmap, they haven't quite got everything ready yet, but just know that that is one in the making. As we go through this video, we're gonna be getting more and more towards the ones which you can actually use today. An actual real life thing that Parler could use by the end of the week to get set back up and back on the internet and never ever have to worry about getting shut down ever again. This one here is called Son M. This is another one which there is currently being developed using blockchain technology so that you can host all of your stuff on the internet and never have it come down. But again, I don't think that this one is quite ready just yet. This next one is Skycoin. I've mentioned this before on the channel. And rather than just sort of hosting websites, these are going for a whole new ecosystem. You'll see down here that they have their own hardware. So rather than having to use the custom hardware with BT or AT&T or whatever it is where you are, um, they actually have their own hardware and you can own this hardware and be part of the network and get paid for that. So I think Skycoin with the Skyminer and all of the stuff that they're doing there with Skycoin is absolutely brilliant. I mean, just check this out. So they got BBS, the framework for building distributed social network services, just like Parler maybe. Okay, so they, they've got loads of stuff here that you can use um, with Skycoin right now. It's great, uh, great technology. And I think that should come on really, really well. I'd love to see more stuff like Skycoin in future. And this one here is the one which I believe Parler should actually be transitioning over to use. So this is Storge. Storge has been about for quite some time already. This is nothing new. So uh, here, uh, basically, you can host a node and get paid for basically providing uh, storage capacity to the decentralized network. And then you can use tardygrade.io. So this is something which is owned by Storge. And there you can basically, it's an S3 compatible decentralized cloud storage solution, which is 100% secure and more affordable and reliable than Amazon Web Services, what Parler was using. And of course, the benefit with this one is that it cannot ever be shut down or taken offline. So decentralized uh, blockchain style uh, hosting is the way of the future and tardy. Um, Tardy grade. So this is what Storage Labs have been working on. This is what they came out with. And as I say, S3 compatible, light years ahead, cannot be shut down. And uh, right here, you can see Tardy grade, $55 compared to Amazon S3, $108. So half the price, you would think, yes. Yeah? So if we have a look down this, through this article here, which is all about John Matz, the owner, the CEO of uh, Parler, and come down here somewhere, it says how much they're spending. So uh, Amazon Web Services Parler had gone from a negligible spend to paying more than $300 a month for hosting with Amazon. So $300 a month could, and I believe should, be getting paid through uh, Storage Labs and they could be using a service like this, Tardigrade. And because it's about half the cost of Amazon Web Services, come on guys at Parler, you'd be getting it a half price what you were paying before. So it's great, right? I've got to say, I think this is an absolute fantastic service. And anybody that does have a website, which is currently using something like Amazon Web Services, this is a much better, safer solution. You cannot get shut down no matter what they think of your content. Uh, it's great, absolutely brilliant. So I definitely recommend that. But if you're looking for something which is more sort of website driven, don't go anywhere because we have one more left to show you right here. And this is the safe network. So this comes from Made Safe, something that Parler could also use maybe. And uh, basically with the safe network, they run a alternative internet network. So uh, yeah, basically an alternative to the normal HTTPS protocol that you would normally have. They have safe um, instead. So. So the, from here, there's examples for all the programming language that we have. If you go to start developing, you can see sample applications. You can uh, 
choose a language if you want to do it in Node.js for the web using Android. That's right. So you can basically put up your HTML website, WordPress, uh, Node.js, whatever it is that you're working on your website. You can host it on the safe network, which is just pretty much the same as the internet. However, you do need the, I believe, the safe browser in order to actually look at any of the websites. So it'd be really nice if you do know about Brave Browser. So Brave Bra Browser is an alternative to Chrome. I believe the people which have made Brave used to work at Google, used to use, uh, used to work on building Google Chrome. They basically took all that technology and created a blockchain style um, one with that. And it basically gives you this, look, look, what is up there? Firewall VPN, everything's super secure so that they're not basically stealing all of your data like Google Chrome, which is constantly running, operating in, in the background of your computer, taking note of everything that you're doing. With Braze, they don't do any of that. It's all completely private and much, much better. So I think it'd be absolutely awesome if something like the Brave browser, which works with normal HTTP protocol, if that was to implement the SAFE protocol as well, so you could actually visit uh, different websites on the SAFE network, that would absolutely make it for me. And I would probably convert all of our websites with Mutri Ninja over to SAFE because um, people could actually view them on there. So that would be cool. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up everything there with Parler. I believe you guys should be getting yourselves over to Storage and uh, getting set back up with Parler pretty quick because the world needs a service like that. A world needs a service where you can just basically say whatever your point of view is. You shouldn't be controlled by the government or anything like that because that is called tyranny. Okay, so moving on, let's get into Bitcoin and just see where that is going. So this, unfortunately, absolute nightmare for me. I did sell off a teeny tiny bit over the weekend, but because some changes with the FCA, I wasn't sure what was going to happen here in the UK with uh, any cash which was left on the exchanges. So I withdrew everything I could from the exchange and then the market fell as I, you know, I thought it would. But, you know, the last few weeks has just been crazy. You didn't really know exactly uh, which way it's going to go. It did start coming down. I've managed to sell off quite a fair bit of crypto, both Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum. I was hoping, though, that today we were going to see this bounce and come up for a second double top right up here and uh, sort of come down from there so I could get out again around 40,000. However, right now we're back down at 32,000. I'm not sure we're going to see a double top or not right now. I don't know. Uh, but what I do know for sure is that we are well overextended. And I've said this before. So back here, I believe we had a crossover down here on the MACD and we was about 18,000 for Bitcoin at the time. And I said famously that we were going to go down to 12,000 because that down there is the 120 day moving average, a moving average that historically Bitcoin has always gone down to. And I was expecting that. Plus also it was about 36% down. It would have been a 36% drop. Unfortunately, we did not go down for a nice, easy 36% pullback. And we instead went up on an insane rally built on basically average Joe investors on the weekends, mainly in America. If you want to look at the data, it's all there for you. This is not institutions buying Bitcoin at all. It was basically people over the weekend pumping the price up. And that went on for a good few weeks until finally, finally it's breaking down. And I say that because I'm a trader and I like to trade and I can't trade if Bitcoin's just going up because I want to be able to make more Bitcoin and I can't make more Bitcoin if I'm just holding Bitcoin and I can't actually trade it with anything. So I'm so glad to see it start coming down now. I wish I managed to sell off more earlier on, but it is coming down and I suspect it's going to be coming down now uh, over the next couple of weeks to the sort of beginning of February. And we should be hitting down here at about 20 grand. OK, so 20 grand is my prediction now and that is where we should be hitting this uh this moving average down there the 120 day moving average that's going to be continuing going up we've also got all this support over here but rather than the 30 36 percent uh pullback which we were expecting before um people have gone nuts and because of that we're going to have a much bigger pullback so right now if it was to come down whoops what am i doing there so if it was to come down right now Using this here, you can see that from the top here where it was, 
we're looking at about a 53% pullback. In fact, that's a little bit high. Maybe pull it down here. So that's going to be a 51, 52% pullback on Bitcoin. So if you have just been hodling your Bitcoin, hoping that it's going to go to like 50 grand or maybe 100 grand by the end of the month, then uh, I'm sorry, but it doesn't really look like it. But the good news is that if you want to double or triple the amount of Bitcoin that you hold, then this is the perfect time to actually start trading that Bitcoin with some of the altcoins. And as we go into this sort of altcoin season now, which is probably going to be happening over the next month or two, you can most certainly do that, maybe even quadruple the amount of Bitcoin that you currently hold. So definitely start looking at trading rather than hodling. You'll make significantly more gains over this uh, coming bull cycle as Bitcoin goes up to sort of like 200,000 and beyond. Much better to have four times the amount of Bitcoin that you have right now, right? Rather than just uh, hold, hodl what you've got. So that's it for now. See you all again in the next video.